I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, I was sharing something. Now, sometimes people call these things strong meat, but it's still meat. It's chewable. Praise God. Yes, it's chewable. And God is bringing these things now because we've entered a unique season in God. Thank you, Lord. I've got a lot to share with you today. But before we do that, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Expect a miracle today. It's part of eternal life. Say with me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming from you, Lord, and I receive all of it. My needs are met today. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Praise God. So I said, it's a, it's a new season. And you know, the Jewish people just entered a new year. And there's something significant, uh, significant about this new year. You know, everyone now, maybe you've heard me say this before, but it does appear that most people who walk with the Spirit, they receive, they begin to receive a new agenda this period of the year. Now, whether you mark this or you don't mark this, you begin to receive fresh instructions for your walk, for your life. Now, when I mean for your life, I'm not just saying do this, do this. Instructions to carry on to the next level about this season. Now, I know sometimes some people argue, eh, did you, you're not a Jewish person. Why are you joining them to celebrate Rosh Hashanah? You know, and things like that. There is a statement Jesus made in John chapter 4. And a lot of people ignore that statement. I want to show it to you. And I pray you'll get wisdom from this Jesus met this woman by the well and they they began to converse and the woman made a statement he says hey let me read it from verse 19 John chapter 4 from verse 19 the woman said to him sir I perceive that you are a prophet our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. Now look at what Jesus said. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming. When you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Watch this. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Take note of that statement. Salvation is of the Jews. Have you ever wondered why Jesus made a statement like that? And do you know what the meaning of that statement is? Salvation is of the Jews. That simply means if you want to understand what salvation is, look are the Jews. Now, why did he say salvation is of the Jews? Now, the Jewish people, incidentally, they are a tribe or a race that began with God. Their father is Abraham. See that? Abraham was called out from where he was to follow the Lord. And through him, a whole nation was born. So everything from when they got into Egypt and God preserved them and, and at the right time he brought them out and they, they moved as a nation. You see the whole nation of Israel. You trace their roots to God. You trace their roots to the word of God. Get thee out of this country and out of your father's house to a land that I will show you. So the land they occupy, the whole people in that land, they came from one thing, and that's the word of God. 
So every dealing God has had with them speaks of something. Now that's why they are unique and special. Now not because every other tribe, well, we can't really say every tribe. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> now, not because there are no other people that came from God, but this is a well-documented journey from God to a place that still exists till this day, a people that still exists till this day, even though most of them have become corrupted. So when Jesus is for salvation is of the Jews. Now that should give you some sense. Now you know what? Look at these Jewish people and learn something from them. That's what Jesus was inferring. Now, so when it comes to dates and, and calendars, we should be smart to look at how did they get their timing? Is it according to the word of the Lord to them? You see that if it is, then we should be smart enough to recognize it. You know why? Because of times and seasons. There is something I'm going to share with you today because this is very significant. Times and seasons are very important to God. Now, we are talking about the manifestation of eternal life. If you want to walk with God properly, there is one thing you must recognize with all of your heart. Times and seasons. And you want to align yourself properly with God's timing. Not forcing God to align with your time. So if the numbering of days is according to the word of the Lord that came to them. Because sometimes you read the Bible and it tells God is giving instructions and says in so so month, in so so day of the month. See that? Now, if they've been able to document the, those writings and align themselves with God's timing, then we should pay attention to their timing. It will give us light. Yes, we found ourselves in this our own time. We found ourselves in this our own dates numbering. So we start our new year in January 1st. See that they start their new year last week, last week Friday. They entered into their new year. And they began to enter from Friday up till I think um, the 17th or thereabout. They, they began to enter the new year. Now, we must recognize, now I'm talking to people who are led by the Spirit. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit is leading you to do things. That's why I started by saying that most of us begin to receive new instructions about this season. Now, looking at that, it begins to let you know that there is something about this season. So, with knowledge now, you can begin to say, Oh, I think God has his timing. And so, if I want to be smart, I, I begin to align myself with God's timing. Now, there are people who don't give, look, please leave all these things. Let's just, let's just preach Jesus. But this is the preaching of Jesus. Because Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. What truth is the Holy Spirit guiding you to bring into alignment with God's original plan? There is nothing new the Holy Spirit is going to do today. Nothing new. Jesus even said it, that he will not speak of himself. But whatever he hears of me, he will take and reveal to you. So the Holy Spirit's job is to bring us into alignment with God's original purpose. That is what the Holy Spirit does. So if you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and knowledge being like I'm sharing with you now, you begin to realize, oh, I think there is something about this season. And, and, and most, most Jewish um, interpretation have said that this year, particularly, it's the year of the door. Now, they, they use numbers and the meaning of numbers to tell that. Now, I see, I've told you this, I think I've, I've shared this before, that 
reading doesn't make don't reading don't make you intelligent. You don't get intelligent because you've read. No, reading helps you express your intelligence. Yeah, that's what reading does too. If you're not intelligent, you're not intelligent. You read all the books in this world, you'll still be where you are. But when you're intelligent, as you read, you express that intelligence. See that? Now, that's the same thing listening does to you. When you're listening, you express intelligence in your listening. So when people talk, you don't just say, ah, I've never heard this book, this is No, you, you, you listen to them. And sometimes, even when they think, that's why I say when you're matured in Christ, even a little child preaching the gospel, you get blessed. Some say, I cannot get blessed apart from my church. I cannot get blessed. You are immature. You are a babe. You are a babe. When you are mature, I come to show you come Everywhere you find yourself, the word of God will come to you. So when we begin to look at these things, we begin to express intelligence in them. We begin to express our spiritual intelligence in them. And as we do that, we begin to see what God wants us to see. So when, when they begin to interpret and say, it's the year of the door. Now, now of course, some go further to say, it means the year of the open door. And, and some others, it means the year to find the door. Now, who's the door? Jesus said, I am the door. By me, the sheep come in and, and go out. And that's significant. That's significant. So when the Lord began to say, or, or to talk to us about the revelation of eternal life, and he says, this is eternal life, the knowledge of God through the door, through Jesus. So he's bringing us into that narrow place where we will begin to see the Father for who he really is. And that's true Jesus, who is the door. Are you getting it? Now, I didn't, I just, you know, I was just, when, when this uh, celebration started over the weekend, that's when I began to pay attention. Like, okay, what's this year all about? And I began to see the door, the door, like, why the door? You see, I said it, you don't, you don't gain intelligence by, by reading. Your intelligence come from, comes from within and is expressed. The same thing with your spirituality. Your spirituality comes from within. So when you meet situations, you express that spirituality. So if you've got the Holy Spirit in you, He will help you interpret things. Things will not make the Holy Spirit increase in you. Are you getting the point now? So things will not make you... you Nobody increases the Holy Ghost in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. But as you experience and explore things, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit becomes more evident in you because he is manifesting himself in the expression of all those things that you see and then your interpretation of them. So you see something, the Holy Spirit begins to talk to you about it. So while I was meditating on the door, the door, then I began to realize, oh, Lord, oh, is this the reason you've been leading us through this part also? That we must come to the place of understanding the Father through Jesus. That's the door. Are you getting it? So that's the door. If you don't go through that door, you would never know him. He said, no man can come to the Father except by me. Who is him? He's the door. Jesus Christ. Is the door. And we now realizing that from the beginning of time, he has proposed that we have eternal life. But death came along the way. For the day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. He told Adam. And they ate of the tree. So death came in along the way. But Jesus came being sent by God 
to give eternal life to us. One of the things he had to do was to abolish debt. Brothers and sisters, Jesus abolished debt. And then he brought light, life and light, light and immortality. He brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? The expression of the knowledge of the Father through Jesus. That's the gospel. Hey, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I want you to take note of that statement. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He didn't just say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Now we know the gospel is good news. But then the gospel is expressed by sin. So let me put that, that statement in perspective. I am not ashamed of the sins or the teachings of Christ. For it is the power of God that leads to salvation to everyone who believes. I'll say that again. In essence, what Paul was saying is, I am not ashamed of the teachings of Christ. Now, what's that? The teachings of the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus has been has given to everyone who believes. So, if you have received the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave to us, the Holy Spirit is expressing words to you. Now, that's what he's doing in your life. He's talking to you. He's speaking to you. If the Holy Spirit is in you, his number one job is to speak to you. Now, those things you are hearing from him is the gospel. It is the teachings. Those words you hear from him John chapter 15 and verse 3, the Amplified Version. It says, you are cleansed or you are pruned through the words that I have spoken unto you. Then he says in bracket, the teachings that I discuss with you. Those are the teachings of Christ. That is the gospel Paul was referring to. So who preaches the gospel? It is Christ that preaches the gospel. It is the Holy Spirit that preaches the gospel. And guess what? He's preaching to you. He's preaching to you. Do you hear him preached? Hey, say, mm, I hear him sometimes. Guess what? Many people, many of you are ashamed of his preachings because the things he begins to tell you, you cannot say them. The things he begins to tell you, you are afraid to leave them. The things he begins to tell you, I mean, you, you, you just there and then you hear, do you know you are not supposed to be sick? That's the gospel you're hearing. You say, hey, let me not say it now because hmm, before people, people think that something is wrong with you. Let me keep quiet. You are ashamed. You are ashamed. Being not ashamed of the gospel, is not, not talking about hiding your Bible. So some people say, hide your Bible. With, with, you know those days of carrying, these days, we, everybody carries their Bible on their phones. But those days where we have Bibles, you take Bibles to church, take Bibles around, and, and, and some people don't want to buy big Bible. If you, those who, those of us that have big Bibles, you know, some want to wrap it so that people will not know and say, ah, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Some are even ashamed to say, I'm going to church. Say, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going for an evening meeting. You know? Sunday morning, yeah, everybody goes to church, you know, depends on where you were raised. And they, but then those evening meetings, they feel it's for the serious ones. So they don't want to be tagged, you know, um, fanatics or too serious ones. So they, they are ashamed to say, I'm going to church. But that's really not what Paul was talking about. That's on the periphery level. That's not a deep. <laughs> what he was talking about is what the Holy Spirit is teaching you. 
How ashamed are you? If you're not ashamed, why are you afraid to say it out? And brothers and sisters, it is in that gospel, those things you hear from the Holy Spirit, that the power of God is that transforms your life. When you hear him tell you, you say it. When you hear him tell you, you say it. What's going on? The power of God that leads to salvation is in that teaching that he's telling you. But too many are ashamed. You've heard in your spirit, God say, I have healed you. But you look at it that if I say it now, people will think you are ashamed. You are ashamed. My time is up. I'll continue tomorrow. But listen to me today. Can you believe him and be bold about what he's telling? Don't be ashamed. Get out of that shame. That's the only way to manifest eternal life. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.